everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Women in Sport Tech panel discussion. My name is Megan. I'm the Senior Partnerships Manager at Sky Production Services in Sky Sports, and I'll be chairing our discussion today. I hope wherever you're joining us from that you're safe and well and ready to hear from some fantastic women who are trailblazing their way through the sports technology arena. We are very fortunate to have with us today Nikki, who's the lead MCR and TV, Charlotte, who is an OB manager at BT Sport, Jenna, who is the operational delivery lead within technical operations at Sky Sports, and last but by no means least, the inimitable Carrie Whitten, MD of RISE, a group for women in broadcast. It is a pleasure to have each and every one of you on this panel. I know you're all so busy keeping the world turning, so thank you so much for making the time and welcome. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So let's plunge straight ahead into some questions because we have a lot to get through this afternoon. And I'm afraid we do start by addressing a bit of an elephant in the room, which is that technology is advancing so rapidly in sports and cultural changes are moving along at quite a fast pace too. But still the number of women at the helm of these companies has remained stagnant. Do you have any thoughts on why this is? Kind of. I think um, my main thought is at the moment we need more um, women who are in uh, lower down roles to promote from i think we that that's kind of the issue is that yes we've got some really good women out there and some amazing ones but there don't seem to be enough sort of um i always say kind of there's plenty of hard working and good sort of men that are reasonably good at their jobs and they work hard and do uh, uh, out there but there's not enough of that kind of level of women and I think, therefore, there isn't the pull to promote from, if that makes sense. That would be my kind of feeling. So I think we need to encourage more what I call jobbing women. And out of that will be some fantastic people that can rise to the top. But if we don't have enough to start with, we've got it, it's, it makes it quite difficult. And that along with all the other obvious things. I do definitely think, though, and maybe I'm wrong here, but I do definitely think there has been a more positive trend of late. I actually think things are improving quite a lot, personally. Um, I think I'm talking from a BT point of view here, and we've got some really good initiatives, um, kind of pan BT, looking at all women's in technology, various roles, um, at looking at how they can kind of, we can further our careers. So I'm part of a great thing called um, the Tech Women Programme at BT, and that looks at how, not so much at like, um, it's more about my personal skills and how I can improve those. And I think that's also a really positive thing. So it's talking about my personal brand. Because also I think, and I think you might agree with this, Nikki, what you've just said is that sometimes when you're in those kind of lower roles, you can feel like you get a bit overshadowed by your kind of male counterparts because of the way you maybe put yourself across. And um, so this kind of tech women program is really focused on how we actually, big part on personal brand and your confidence. And so I do think things are improving and companies are beginning to realize that um, sometimes just the skill set that we need needs a little bit more kind of honing in and toning. Because women were very um, quick, almost to, too quick to sometimes take a back step and to, rather than sort of, you know, somebody comes in with all guns blazing and says, no, 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 you don't do it like that. We go, oh, OK, uh, because it's kind of in our nature. Um, whereas, yes, you're absolutely right, Charlotte. I think that it's great that you're getting um, skills personal skills and I think that's that's really important and I think that that would be really good to encourage in a lot of other companies. I was just going to say we definitely see that in our RISE mentoring program as well that actually that confidence and personal branding is absolutely critical and I don't think you can undervalue that as a woman working in the sector so totally agree with all of that. I also think there's a couple of other factors we do we know from Simpty's research from our research with the IABM recently that we have an aging white male workforce the stats are there and we also know that some university courses are struggling to recruit talent um, just talent full stop um, and there and there's a real issue so we've got an aging workforce a lack of diversity and also you know we're struggling to get talent in so but the positive side is exactly what Charlotte's just said, is that companies are taking this issue around diversity and gender balance really seriously now. And actually, there's a big conversation at the moment happening. It's, it's now now is the time to, in, you know, action all of this and to ensure that the, the momentum that's in place actually leads to real sustainable change. And that actually all of these initiatives do change the balance of the workforce. And we see and we see that gender balance happening. 
Yeah, it's something similar at Sky. We have um, we have a women's network, and then we have um, an open technology. And I think it's really interesting to not just get women interested in per se television tech, but tech as a whole. Um, so we're offering coding classes and software programming um, for people who haven't had any exposure to that. And I think it's such a fantastic thing because we can pull from that as well in television um, once they start getting interested and they, they find themselves to be curious about um, other things that are there and that confidence is there to try something new. Um, and I think there's, there's a lot to be said though for having a network at your company and being able to see other women in those roles. And I think that's, that's what's tough when you have such a small pool um, to pick from. But uh, I'm a big believer if, if you can see it, you can be it. And yeah. we need to see more women in those positions. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Thanks everyone. Um, now let's move on to some sort of slightly more positive territory um, by exploring what your own journeys have been. What was your own personal path into the career in sports tech that you have today? I don't mind going first, if you want. Um, mine is very untechnical, actually. Um, so at university, I studied history and politics, um, but I kind of always knew I wanted to work in sport of some kind. I actually really wanted to be a sports commentator Thank goodness I didn't. I waffle so much. I would have been useless. And um, I'm a Millwall supporter, so I only wanted to commentate on them. They don't get much coverage. Um, but yeah, so um, on leaving university, I was very lucky. I got a job in BT PR, actually, um, in the uh, PR team, just as BT Sport was launching. Um, and quite quickly, actually, I moved over to BT Sport, initially in a production secretary role. Um, I was very lucky. I started working with our chief engineer, Andy Beale, who many of you know. Um, and from there, I just developed this absolute love of technology and engineering. It was completely kind of unknown to me. Um, but the other big thing about me is I love crosswords, challenges, puzzles. And so for me, it was like an absolutely perfect fit. So um, I basically moved up within the engineering team, actually. So I started as the uh, project manager um, and then the technical production manager. Um, and then almost a year ago now, um, I became the outside broadcast manager because I have to say it was OBs that really kind of blew me away um, at sport. It was the thing that I just went to the first one. I remember my first week and I just thought it was absolutely amazing. Um, so mine is completely on kind of engineering at university, but has really developed um, into, yeah, that kind of world now. I love that, Charlotte. I love that actually it's not, you didn't start in a technical way. And I think that's really what's brilliant is that we can that you don't necessarily have to have studied that. Actually, there are there are still roots into this exactly. sector. And I really I think that's really important. Sorry, I'm jumping in about something else, but I just think that's brilliant. So, yeah, awesome work. No, yeah. And it, it's so funny. Isn't it? Looking back now, I'm always a bit at odds whether or not I wish I'd done an engineering degree because every day for me is such a hard learning curve, to be honest, because, you know, I'm not like Nikki has this amazing kind of technical knowledge. Um, but I, on the flip side, I love the challenge. And so I don't know if I would do it differently, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. What about you, Nikki? I left school and became a hairdresser. And I was did a <laughs> Brilliant. Good as a hairdresser. I did that for seven years. Got a little bit bored, thought, what can I do? And I was really lucky because I was working in um, the West End in central London and it was very busy post-production, lots of clients and post-production people. And I got a job as a sort of um, working for a small facilities company as a sort of general everything person. I fed the dog, I did all the bookings for the uh, transfers and all that sort of stuff. And then from there, I got a job working um, as assistant to head of operations at uh, Super Channel, which was quite a few years ago. And from there, I got interested in transmission. And I just thought, transmission, this is where I want to be. This is really it's similar to Charlotte in that I thought everything engineering just excited me and everything operational. So I did transmission for quite a long time and uh, moved over to... Um, slightly more technical areas and then decided to because I loved it so much I did a digital communications engineering degree with the open university and that was just it was fantastic and I loved it I loved it all and uh, so that's how I've got to where I am today it's taken some years brilliant. though <laughs> brilliant multi-skilled Nikki Excellent. love it yeah thank you how about you Jenna 
Oh, um, a little a little strange in that I was really lucky that my high school, because um, I'm clearly American, um, so different school system. But um, when I was uh, coming out of high school, we actually had a TV station. Um, one of my um, teachers was really gung ho and started this little rinky dink VHS, you know, like literally two VCRs and you would push stop and record to edit kind of stuff because um, I am <clears throat> old. So, um, <laughs> um, and um, through that, I, you know, I got an internship and I thought, you're seriously going to pay me to do this. Like this, nobody ever talked about this being a career that I can work in creating television. Like, what is this magical thing? And uh, yeah, I got a job. Um, I started out in the field um, as a camera person. I was the first female camera person um, at two different news stations um, that I worked for. And then I started shooting sports. And I never really kind of left sports um, after that. So working on the sidelines, um, you know, shooting one man banding, live shots, editing, and then going on to um, remote field producing, remote operations, and um, uh, launched a couple of startup channels and then just decided to come work in England. And I got really, really lucky at Sky because I've been here about five years and I think I'm on my fifth job. Um, and things have not stopped moving here. It's incredible. Amazing. Fabulous. Thanks ever so much. Um, so let's talk about technology now. We'll go around the room and ask, what in your opinion is the most interesting technology coming which has or will transform broadcast sport? You want to go first again, Charlotte, put you on the spot. Sorry. <laughs> um... So look, I think 5G is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, at BT Sport, we do a lot of focus on kind of remote productions at the moment. Um, and I think for us, that that will be a kind of a, another game changer. Um, I kind of think also, you know, for us as well, um, with, you know, lockdown and everything, the way it's changed, no fans in the stadium, another kind of big game changer has actually been kind of the new products we put on our BT Sport app. So um we have a new app which you can call Watch Together on Match Day. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of through the app where you can tune in with your friends and actually watch the game whilst watching on your phone. Um, and I think for us, that is a real game changer as well because it kind of sticks to what BT wants the most, which is to bring sport to the heart of fans. And so um, that to me is another really big, exciting you know, development, which actually I think we're going to see a lot more of kind of new developments due to the new way of kind of watching sport. Great, thank you. Nikki, would you like to go next? Yes, I was going to say um, same things as, as Charlotte uh, for us, uh, 5G remote productions. And also because I because of my you know what, what I do it's it's more down digging down to things like how the cameras are operated and how they can come back remotely that that sort of thing but the other thing that I was also thinking is that it, it's similar it's small increments there's lots and lots there's not one big thing at the moment I think there's lots and lots of small incremental things you know like web streaming the quality of that is is improving all the time you know there's more just people are, have more access to channels uh, in different ways of receiving them and like as charlotte said the watch together app that sort of thing so it's all those sort of things and i think it's it's the small increments i i feel rather than one big thing it's just that there's just so much happening it's 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 stunning I'm, you know it's so exciting and it's a, it's a, we're adapting so quickly to it all, aren't we, as well? Because, I mean, COVID, COVID is just, I mean, just, it, you know, it scaled that beyond any belief. And I think that's what's really exciting is that the industry knows how quickly it can adapt now and actually utilise all of these different technologies and the potential of them. And I think everybody's creating and innovating in different ways. I think that's what's really exciting is that we know what can be done. And actually, so where does that, where does that go now? It's really, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, for so. sure. No, no, I completely agree. And I think, I know that Jen has been involved in similar developments at Sky. Yeah, remote remote production. We've done it at Sky for quite some time, but not to this scale. Um, and also not implemented in the speed in which we all had to do it, right? It was like, oh, by the way, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, if you look at our restart, I think it was, what, 100 games in 40 days um, we did. And that was remote. Um, and, and that's it boggles your mind a little bit to get your handle on that scale of things. It's one thing to do one program, but to do it day in and day out, 24 hours a day has been um, exciting and exhausting 
um, for our teams. But I think one thing that excites me about um, remote and the way that we're operating now is it really kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Um, I started out in the field and now I'm primarily a, a home-based um, a person and we we'll always need people in the field. Things don't happen if you're not on site, but this is opening up a whole new world to people who haven't had that ability. Um, they may have, you know, they may have had home commitments. They may be caring for a parent and they don't have the option to go on the road for these kind of seasons because it's difficult. I mean, Charlotte, you're there, right? It's, it's tough not knowing where you're going to be yeah. and not knowing when you're going to get home. But now they have the opportunity to work on some of our biggest games that they, that they wouldn't have had before um and i i'm excited about that because i feel you know some people may have felt um uncomfortable um going on the road maybe because of you know family commitments mm -hmm. or even um whatever it may be and now they're getting to participate it's fantastic yeah that's I, amazing I it's something isn't it? not to be overlooked in these times yeah yeah I, I have to say i think that's such a good point mm -hmm. Jenna. i think it just makes it such an inc so much more inclusive now um, and I think that is so exciting I really love that point yeah because females traditionally do more caring and traditionally do more care, ca exactly. caring and also childcare so actually this step change could just you know achieve that aim of gender balance can it can so it's yeah that is hugely yeah. exciting it's gonna help you know, of course, I think for like disabilities as well, just kind of broadening the mm. field, a yeah. truck is really not the most, um, you know, welcoming environment for anyone. And I just mm. think that also, it also opens up that whole kind of debate as well, which I think yeah. is so exciting. And hidden disabilities, you know, that that, exactly. that may yeah. not be as prevalent, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. exciting. It's exciting. That is exciting, exciting to see. Yeah. 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 yeah, huge time of change and opportunity at the moment, for sure. Um, and the next question I've got for you, ladies, is in terms of personal achievements in your field, how what would you describe as yours? First, Do you want me to <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, I think for me, um, I actually think for me it was becoming outside broadcast manager, um, which was a year ago. Um, I never ever thought that I would be able to do that role uh, because I always thought it's so kind of technical engineering, dealing with your fibers, satellites, um, sound, which still boggles my mind. Um, so for me, I think that was just, you know, it was a huge kind of, it was quite a big jump taking it. I had some real big reservations, but you know, I'm so pleased I did and I've loved every moment. So mine is quite a broad one, but um, yeah, I've loved it. It's wonderful to hear, thank you. Nikki, Jenna? Shall I go next? <laughs> I was just saying my, um, I, I, my, I feel that being part of a team which seems to specialise in flexibility and using new technologies such as uh, what, we're, what we're doing at the moment in, on such a large scale, which is what the timeline does at Podcat. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's oh, just it. That's, that's why that's how I feel about you know it, it's a bit like Charlotte it's the job I'm doing now I feel that this is this is I feel like this is what I've always wanted to do and, and have meant to do uh, for example <laughs> <laughs> 52 uh, HD feeds coming into the building uh, uh, last weekend and you know we only really have the ability for 48 and so we just find lots of extra new sort of thing, places to put them so uh, yes yeah, sorry slightly distracted there but yeah that's how I feel you know that's one of my uh, one of my greatest achievements I think so yeah excellent thank you <laughs> what would you say Dana um, gosh, I mean, you know, uh, packing up just me and my dog and, and moving 6,000 miles to another country to a job I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, I think that was that was probably the riskiest thing I've done. Um, and I'm, you know, overjoyed with the way it's turned out. And, you know, yeah, I'm just really, really thrilled with the role I have and, and the team that I'm on now. Um, it's never the same thing twice. Um, every day is different. I get, I'm so involved in so many different areas that um, it's mind boggling that somebody actually pays me to, you know, to stick my fingers in everything and be like, you know, come get involved. And it's, yeah, I couldn't be more thrilled right now. 
I know I sound like I drank the Kool-Aid, but I <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. It's lovely. This is exactly what we wanted this discussion to be, a really positive message. Um, so uh, I think our last question is, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience in terms of both shaping a career in sports and finding new opportunities? Well, maybe I'll start with that one. Um, I think we've just been talking about some of those new opportunities, haven't we? And, and mm -hmm. enabling us to have a more diverse workforce. I think that is really exciting and bring that on. Long may that continue. And, um, you know, that those technical developments that we're talking about, if we can, you know, support diverse, a diverse workforce, workforce coming through them. Brilliant. Um, we're also working on Rise Up, which you may or may not know. It's um, We launched it last year with BT Sport and ITV. It's a hands-on practical broadcast studio workshop for primary school children where the kids get their hands on the kit and they set up this mini broadcast studio in their classroom or their school hall. Um, obviously, COVID scuppered the things a little bit, but um, we were rolling these sessions out at the start of the year. And I have to say, it's just amazing. Like the excitement in the room when the kids suddenly realise that they've made the microphones work or they can speak on cans or, or do you know what I mean? It's just it's brilliant. And actually talking about diverse talent coming through and encouraging new talent, then absolutely we need to start at a really young age. And, and these kids at 10 and 11, they know they know whether this is of interest to them. They know that whether this is perhaps a career path for them to talk about. So um, so although we've not been kind of in the schools recently, we are, we are kind of repivoting as everybody has been and, and working with schools, delivering stuff online. And as soon as we can get back into schools, we will do. But um, I think definitely encouraging, inspiring, informing, educating young people about the opportunities within the industry is really, is, re is hugely important. And all, all these amazing women, all of you have shown that there's so many different opportunities within the sector and actually it's a brilliant and exciting place to be right now. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to when we can kind of get back in and, and, and work with children, both in primary school and secondary school to, to inspire them some more. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing that, Carrie. Um, I just want to see, and um, we've actually got a few questions from the audience. Um, so I think we'll move on to those next. Let's have a look. This is a really good one. Um, regardless of gender, is it about who you know to get into the industry or your skills and experience? That's a tricky one because I think it's a bit of both. No, go ahead, Nikki, please go ahead. I was going to say it's a little bit of both. And a little bit of neither. It's sometimes just a bit about um, searching around and looking in the right places as well. And also being in the right place at the right time. But I think if you're determined, you just need to go down every route you can. And, you know, to, you know, if there's somebody you know, ask them, go and see people, talk to people. I think it's like getting any job in any industry, to be honest. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Nikki. You know, I can only comment really on my own journey. And I, you know, I started be sports production secretary and have then had amazing support around me, which has enabled me to get to the position I've been in now. But you know, that hasn't been because I haven't, you know, I've asked the questions, I've done what I need to do, and I've just been surrounded very fortunately by fantastic people that have been willing to support my journey. So I think if you can get, you know, any of the companies that we work for all show that kind of, those show those attributes. Um, but I do think, you know, it's also on you as the person to really kind of go out and ask those questions and and kind of find out what you can and do make those contacts because ultimately in it's as Nikki says, I do think it's like in any industry that it is who you kind of get to know and just take pieces of advice from them where you can, because it's so important. And I think it's about building your network, isn't it, as well? Like exactly what you've just been talking about, Charlie. You came in at one at one point within the company and actually you've moved your way across. But that's because you've networked as well and made those connections and gone, actually, this bit over here interests me, so I'm going to talk to them. So it's about when you do have the opportunity to maximise it, I suppose, as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it's so much easier nowadays too, isn't it? With the with, with internet and, and events like this, yeah. Um, you know, to tap into your LinkedIn and just ask somebody for five minutes. I, I find I've always found people are really willing to give back, um, and it's been yeah. so important to find an, an ally, in essentially, um, that could you know help build your network, answer questions, and and yeah. then help move you forward but a lot it could be it could be really about being in the right place can it Nikki it's like you just happen to be available and something it definitely yeah. yeah and it is as you say, definitely about building
work and about speaking to people and saying mm. you know because that happened to me when I started you know I was somebody's assistant and I sort of wandered into transmission one day because I was asked to take a memo down there or something and I wandered in I thought oh this looks good this is interesting what are you guys doing you know uh, oh I want to work there and telling people as well because I found that mm. too you know if you just are a shrinking violet it doesn't work you have to say this is where I want to be I want to do this how can you help me can you help me do this yeah and having the confidence to say that and I think that's a really important really important to recognize actually and as you say to say it and to ensure that people around you as Charlotte was explaining they're supportive they they want they want you to get there because you know that's it's about ensuring yeah that everybody works collectively as a team and everybody wants to be the whole company to be successful and for you as individuals to be successful as well so yeah yeah Definitely. For sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have another question here. I think we've got a few more minutes to go, so we'll get through as many as we can. We've got a question from, I believe it's Claire Downey, and uh, it's just disappeared. <laughs> oh, there we are. I know what it's like to get to a technical role in broadcast via an unusual route. What resources have you used to train up your tech knowledge? Great question, Claire. All my co-workers. I mean, <laughs> really? you know, like, like, you know, like seriously, you find somebody who's good at something and they love to talk about it. So why not take that in? You know, you find somebody who's brilliant at something and just be like, I'm sorry, how did you do that? And <laughs> an hour later, you know, people are very willing to talk about themselves. <laughs> um, yeah, I think my coworkers are an incredible source of knowledge and not just from my own area. Um, as Nikki was saying, like you wander into another area and you're like, wow, what is that about? You know, what is it that you do? Obviously not when they're live and under a crunch. Um, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I find I find my coworkers, you know, and in past coworkers as well that I've kept in touch with um, or people who have introduced me to other people who work at other places and I've never worked with them, um, but who just have a lot of knowledge in something. Um, and I just, you know, beg. <laughs> I 100% agree with that. Obviously, as I've said, look, I come from no technical background, so I haven't necessarily had those basic foundations. And look, I have bought the big books trying to teach myself. I bought these huge books when I first got the job, and I, I still don't understand half of it. But when I'm on site, and I think it's because a lot of roles within television. So take, for example, if you're an EBS op, right? It's so hands-on. There's no book or anything that's going to teach you that. For me, as a tech producer, when I'm on site and I'm doing lineups with Nikki, um, when she's in MCR and I'm on the road, I can only learn that from learning from someone else. Um, and so I think you're completely right. I think it's just all about the people around you. It's important because, and also, you know, when things go wrong, they're actually the best learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like they are amazing. Whilst they might take years <laughs> off of your life. <laughs> they are, they are, they are Nick has done a number of shows with me where I was in tears at the OP, just being like, I don't know what I'm doing. But we've always made it to air and I've come out of them learning so much. So weirdly, I don't want to go wrong every week and go wrong on like big events like Champions League. But like other things, it's okay every so often because that's where you learn so much, I think. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And it all feeds into that being brave and having that confidence and building it as you yeah. go. Yeah, and not being scared to fail, right? Where ethic, this is a wider context, isn't it? Mm. About just your career journey anyway is actually, as you totally say, Charlotte, fa failing is good. You learn so much from that. So whether that's something going wrong yeah. just before you go on air or actually something in, in just in the general day-to-day -day working life, actually, that's really important. Oh, yeah. One of my first OBs, sorry, just one of my first OBs as um as a tech producer, I was on it was one of my first ones alone. And I'm not joking, it's still a miracle how we got to air. I just didn't everything was going wrong, like cars were literally exploding in this truck. And we did it. And like at the time, I was I was really quite shell-shocked, but actually on reflection, it was the best thing that happened. It really was. Yeah, excellent thank you what I was just going to say though I think that one big advantage we have as women and I've noticed with some of the guys I work with they don't do it we are I think braver to ask we're better at asking if we don't understand something I don't know if, mm. if um, other people agree but I was just just a thought that came into my head <laughs> and Charlotte's one which is when things break you learn a lot <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really proud of myself now, have I? <laughs> 
<laughs> Excellent. Thank you so, so much, everybody. Um, I think we are very short on time now. Um, so I just want to thank you so much for joining our discussion today. Pleasure.